So a couple of you guys in the comments have been asking how do I dilute solid materials and how do I dilute thick resinous materials? To be honest, especially with these thick resinous materials, it is very annoying. They are difficult to work with. Um, usually the best thing that I find to do is to heat them up a bit and get them liquid and then get them in a dilution. Once you've got your dilution and perfume as alcohol, you can effectively treat them like any other material and just pipette them out as usual. So what I like to do is make quite a large stock solution one time or whenever I have to of the material and then I don't have to worry about it anymore until I run out of that. For those of you who like working with pure materials, I would at least really recommend doing pre-dilutions just for these tricky materials because it's going to be such a nightmare to work with if you're trying to do this every time you just want to make a trial formulation. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to share with you my method for dealing with these materials. If you've got a better method, uh, please leave it in the comments. And if you don't know how to dilute these materials or you've never done it before, then follow along and you should be able to do it quite easily yourself at home. I got the ethyl maltol from Pell Wall, and I got the labdanum absolute from a private UK reseller called Harry. He doesn't have a web store, but I'll leave his email address in the description below, and I'll also leave a link to Pell Wall in the description below. Full disclosure, I'm not sponsored by either, and I bought these ingredients using my own money. Okay then, so let's have a look at these ingredients. Firstly, the labdanum absolute. Now, this is extremely thick and extremely viscous, so if I turn it upside down, you can see that it moves very, very slowly. The problem with this is that if I try to suck it up into a pipette, it's just going to get stuck, so it's not actually going to fall off into my bottle. Next, we have the ethyl maltol. Now, if we look inside the box, we can see that this is a white crystalline powder. Now, this isn't as difficult to work with as the labdanum, but it's still not going to go into a pipette, so we are going to have to find another way of dealing with it. So let's start with the labdanum. I have pre-labeled a bottle to make my dilution in. What we're now going to do is take both the bottle with the labdanum and my pre-labeled bottle and we are going to heat them up. Now we can do this on top of a boiler, which is a nice method, or we can also put them into the oven. The only thing we've got to be careful about if we put them into the oven is to use a very low temperature, something like 50 degrees. Basically we run the risk firstly of the glass shattering, but more importantly of something catching fire or exploding. As a rule of thumb, I would always check the safety data sheet for the material you're using and make sure that the temperature of the oven is lower than the flashpoint temperature given in the safety data sheet. This is very low for ethanol or perfumous alcohol, which is about 13 degrees Celsius, which means you should never put this in the oven. Otherwise you run the risk of it exploding, especially if you have a gas oven with a naked flame. Okay then, so we're gonna take the bottle we've been heating up out of the oven and the labdanum off of the boiler. You could have used the oven for the labdanum as well because it's flash points quite high. So as long as you didn't heat it up too much, it should be fine. At this point, we wanna move quite quickly because everything's still hot. The reason we heated up the glass bottle we're going to put our dilution in as well is because we want that glass to remain hot so that when we put the labdanum inside it doesn't instantly solidify. I'm using a pipette here and kind of scooping it a bit like honey out of the pot of labdanum and into the bottle for the dilution. If any gets on the rim of the bottle, I'm making sure to wipe it off with some kitchen roll. And basically I'm just weighing out a good amount into the bottle for the dilution. You could use something else like a spatula if you had that. And once you've finished, just scrape off the sides into the bottle to make sure as much as possible goes into the bottle and isn't wasted. We now need to work out how much perfumes alcohol to add. In this case, I used 0.66 grams of labdanum. So in order to make a 10% dilution, what I'm gonna do is take that 0.66 and times it by nine and add that much perfumous alcohol into the bottle. So in this case, I'm going to add 5.94 grams of perfumous alcohol into the sample vial. At this stage, it probably won't have all dissolved. So what I would do is put it back on the boiler just to give it a tiny bit of heat and then shake it a lot regularly and that should be enough to fully dissolve it. I would be very careful about putting it back in the oven at this point because now it's got ethanol in it, it will be a lot more dangerous than it was before. Next then for the ethyl maltol. So this one is going to be a lot easier. All we need to do is weigh out the powder and then dilute it as normal. So the trick that I like to use here is I like to get a scent strip and use it like a spatula. So I'll take one end of the scent strip and put it inside the pot of the powder and then I will break it up if it's clumped together at all. And then I will slowly just spoon it out into the bottle. 
Once again, all we need to now do is times whatever weight we had at ethyl maltol by nine, and that will be the weight of perfume as alcohol that we need to add to make up the 10% solution. This is another good reason why you should always use weight instead of volume in perfumery. You can't count ethyl maltol out by drops, but you can weigh it like anything else. I did do a whole video on why you should always use weight instead of volume because there are a few good reasons. So make sure you definitely watch that if you haven't watched it already. I'll leave a link in the description below. Right then, so now I've made these dilutions, I might as well also let you guys know how they smell just in case you don't already own these materials. So starting with the ethyl maltol. So ethyl maltol is something which is a mid note and it smells quite sweet and almost a bit caramelly, a bit like kind of a sweet, jammy, maybe a bit candy floss, that kind of scent. So I find this is useful in fruit accords. It can also be used to make a candy floss accord or any other kind of sugary, burnt sugar kind of accord, that kind of thing. And now for the labdanum. So labdanum is a middle slash bass note. It's very unique, uh, one of my favorite smells and perfumery effects, and this is a primary constituent of amber accords, but it can be used across the board in lots of different situations. It's hard to describe how it smells because it's so unique, but I would definitely describe it as a kind of brown if it was a color. Um, it's a little bit leathery, it's a bit kind of resinous, a bit ambery, a bit, a little bit woody. It's, it's just very unique. Um, but I, it's super, super nice and you can use it in lots of different situations. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you've got any more suggestions, do leave those down in the comments because I may be able to cover them at some points. Um, apart from that, I really appreciate all of the support that you guys have been giving me. It's really nice to see all the likes on the videos and all the lovely comments. So thank you very much for that. And one final thing before I go, I am still expanding out my web store at the moment. So if you're looking for perfumery supplies, that kind of thing. For me, the whole idea with this shop, especially in terms of perfumery supplies, is to make some kind of place where you can get the essential things you need and actually get them at a reasonable price. And the reason for this is because I see so many shops selling perfumery stuff online, which charge through the roof for basic things like scent strips and pipettes when they're really not worth that much. Because the way I see it is if you're doing perfumery as a hobby, you don't want to be worried when you're going to use a pipette or worried when you use a scent strip because it's going to cost you so much. You want to be able to buy a load and just have them at a decent price so you don't have to think twice about using them, which means you can actually focus on perfumery. The store still is tiny at the moment, so I'm only selling a few things. However, I still think it's worth checking out, especially if you're in the UK because my UK postage being in the UK is obviously much cheaper than it is to other countries. If you're in other countries, it might still be a better deal for you just to go and find stuff from different shops in your own country. Anyways, thank you once again for watching guys. I really appreciate it and have a lovely rest of your day. Goodbye.